Hi all. When I observe a student tackle a resonance problem, sometimes they hesitate because they are unsure of where to start. In this video, I want to jot down some tips on where to start if you have a cation or an anion or a molecule that has an oxygen atom or a nitrogen atom. First, I want to say that this video is far enough in the semester that students should be very comfortable drawing line structures and remembering these things. Let me give you a list. First thing, carbocations have three bonds and no lone pairs, which is a plus charge, and you see that for the first structure and also for the third. Carbanions have three bonds and one lone pair, which is a minus charge, and you see that here. Number two, with line structures, you have to be vigilant and be able to check quickly that no structure has what's called a Texas carbon. You know the flag of the Lone Star State has a five-pointed uh, five star. We do not want to see that on a carbon. We don't want to see a carbon with five bonds. Number three, alkenes have pi bonds, and they are the overlapping of few orbitals. The pi electrons can shift to make a new double bond or a lone pair. Not only do you want to know these rules, but you also want to know how and when to apply them. Okay, a couple more things. Let's talk about the ground rules for mechanism arrows. Number one, start mechanism arrows from a source of electrons. That could either be a bond or a lone pair. For now. Later on, much later in the semester, we will see an instance where we can we can move using a mechanism arrow a single electron or a radical. But for now, all mechanism arrows should start from a bond or lone pair. Number two, in resonance, only electrons move, not the atoms. Now this may seem very simple to remember, but I Imagine this because in the final structure, as you're looking at your molecule and figuring out where the hydrogens are, you might assume that a hydrogen had shipped or hydrogen had moved from one carbon to the other to make a certain carbon, either a carbocation or a neutral carbon. Again, you can't do that. A hydrogen cannot move just for the sake of making a carbon neutral. Because in resonance, only electrons move, not the atoms. You can't have atoms moving, or else you're forming a constitutional isomer. We're not forming isomers. We're drawing resonance structures. Point three and four are very important because there are rules where you can draw the end of a mechanism arrow. Where can we put these electrons? If you have two electrons of a lone pair, that can move only to the adjacent bond to make a pi bond. You can't take a lone pair and have it travel all the way across the molecule. So just move the lone pair to an adjacent bond and you are going to make a pi bond when you do that. And number four, what about the pi bond? You can move the electrons of a pi bond to the adjacent bond or to an atom to form most likely an anionic charge. All of this will be applied. Right now I know it's a little bit abstract, but just know that these are the two movements that you will be doing with mechanism arrows. You are going to be moving lone pairs and electrons of pi bonds, but you have to follow these two rules. Let's look at that first structure. That first structure is a carbocation automatically you should know that that carbon right here has three bonds always. Carbocations always have three bonds, so that third bond has to be to a hydrogen. In each resonance structure, that carbon right here off of the ring has to have one and only one hydrogen because, again, atoms do not move in resonance. Now, what is the tip I want to give you for carbocations? For carbocation, most likely you will be moving a pi bond. Colored pens will be good. I'm going to draw all my mechanism arrows uh, in pink 
and the resulting uh, structures in blue. The one in black is the one that was given to me by the problem. So here's the idea. We have two pi bonds that are close to the carbocation. They're actually adjacent. Okay. Um, I think half the class would choose to move this pi bond to the right. The other half of the class might choose this pi bond and move it to the left. Either one is fine. Okay. I am going to choose to move this pi bond like that. When you draw resonance structures, you have to give the reader a, a warning that you are drawing resonance structures. You're not drawing identical structures. You're not drawing rotated structures. You're drawing structures, Lewis structures, in which the electrons move, the atoms do not. Oops, made a mistake already. That pi bond is no longer there. I moved two electrons, yikes, and I shifted that pi bond to the right. Do you see that? And then the rest stays the same. Now, if I ask, if I ask someone in organic chemistry, how many hydrogens does this carbon have? Without any other knowledge, they will say two. But again, atoms do not move in resonance. We know that there's only one hydrogen here, and I will, I'll draw it, okay? So there's only one hydrogen on that carbon. So that carbon only has three bonds. Your plus charge is now here. Okay, so it, um, the pattern is it skips the carbon and goes to the carbon that's naked, the carbon that lost a bond. But what about this carbon right here? See, that carbon has one hydrogen. It still has one hydrogen, and now, because it has a double bond, it is neutral. That's my second resonance structure, this being the first. Now, we mentioned that 50% of the class would have moved this other pi bond to put the plus charge where? To put the plus charge at the very end. That is a valid resonance structure, and we have to get to it. The idea is, you can't start here and say, well, okay, I'm going to redraw this and move now this pi bond. You should be able to get to that last resonance structure using this structure here. You want to be able to resonance structures, sorry, you want to be able to draw mechanism arrows from structure A to B, and now we have one more to C. So what does that look like? So this is a case where we're going to move a pi bond to adjacent bond, okay, which will move, see, you notice that this carbon now has five bonds, that's a Texas carbon, so we got to resolve that, right? There's a, there's a hydrogen right here, and we'll make, two, we have now two double bonds. We need to resolve that and sh that pi bond to this bond. Be very clear for the greater where you're ending. This is a little bit close, but it should be pointing to the bond. Notice that every arrow started from a source of electrons, the pi bond. And this would be it. This would be our last resonance structure. And where's that? Where's that carbocation? That carbocation is now at the very end, right here. Do you notice how that carbon has two hydrogens? So if that carbon only has two hydrogens, it's missing a bond. Look where the plus charge ends up being. It ends up being on this carbon, this carbon, and this carbon. It, they alternate. And that's it. There are only three resonance structures for this molecule. And I can imagine that some of you are saying, well, what about this pi bond? This pi bond never moved. This pi bond never participated. Yeah, it never participated because how I move it to the adjacent bond to the top, or adjacent bond to the bottom, I'm going to make a carbon that has five bonds and I cannot resolve it. I can't fix it right away. In this case, when I make this double bond, I can fix that carbon right away and shift this double bond away to get it back to what? To get it back to four bonds on that carbon. That's your carbocation example. Next, let me draw the carbanion example. The carbanion looks like this. What is the tip for anion? 
from here that carbanions have three bonds and one lone pair. So there's a lone pair right there. And I'm gonna draw it in blue. The you know the professor or whoever's writing this drawing the structure doesn't have to put the lone pairs. Just from the charge, you should know that there's a lone pair right there. It's a carbon ion. And then also you know that oxygen, when neutral, has two bonds and two lone pairs. Draw all the lone pairs and then start by moving the lone pair of the anion atom. So we're looking at that. So we have the rule where a lone pair right here, the two electrons of a lone pair can move to an adjacent bond to make a pi bond. Well, if I move it to the left, you notice that this carbon, which has already three hydrogens, will have a double bond. That carbon will have five bonds. Okay, so don't move it to the left. Let's try moving it to the right. Again, you can only move it to the adjacent bond. But when I do that, do you see how this carbon right here now has five bonds because it has a double bond on the left, double bond on the right, and a single bond going down? But because it's a double bond, we could resolve that right away, just like we did up here. Okay, Resolve meaning that we could get it back to four bonds. And here's the trick. Move it to the adjacent carbon because a oh here it is the two elements of a pi bond can move an adjacent bond or to the adjacent atom if you want to put adjacent let's put adjacent okay um yep there it is see there's the pi bond and there's the adjacent atom what does this do for us? Okay. If you're not seeing this very well, the suggestion is draw all the letters, draw the Lewis structures. So you could literally see the hydrogens and the carbons. Because now we have a double bond right here. Okay. You see how I made a double bond with that lone pair? I'm pushing two electrons onto this atom directly onto that atom. So we have that. That carbon only has three, sorry, that carbon has one hydrogen. It still only has one hydrogen. And we know that a carbon with three bonds and one lone pair is negative. Do you see how the negative also skipped a spot? And it landed on this carbon. And then we have the rest of the molecule. Okay. Um, okay, I'm just making sure that I have that pi bond made. Now, just like constitutional isomer, problems, you have to know when to stop or have a feeling of when to stop because we could keep going. I'm not going to go back to make this structure. I'm going to keep going to the right and I make a double bond there, which is fine because see this carbon? I could push these two electrons onto the oxygen. So this is an example where not only do we have a carbanion, but one of our resonance structures has an oxyanion, an oxygen with a charge, a negative charge. That's why it's good to draw the lone pairs as well, because now you can tell using your formal charge equation that that oxygen is negative. Okay. It still fits the octet rule as always, but now it's negative. There are three resonance structures for this molecule. What was the tip for carbocation? See if you can move a pi bond towards the C plus or to another pi bond. We have a pi bond right there. I am going to move it there. Now, do we have any Texas carbons? No. That carbon now has four bonds because there's a double bond here. This carbon's naked, so that carbon will now be positively charged. And we have this. Now, I'm showing you this example because oxygen can do something neat. It can have three bonds and be positive. But let us draw the lone pairs. When in doubt, draw the lone pairs because there is one more resonance structure we can do here. We haven't seen this yet, but you could use the lone pair of an oxygen. And if you move it towards the plus charge, 
Do you see how that carbon now is neutral? But now what about that oxygen? That oxygen is now positive. This gives this brings up uh, a way to check charges. So far we've conserved charge. Every resonant structure in a series has the same net charge. Positive, 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 negative, negative, oop, negative, and positive, positive, positive. And that's it for this molecule here. So this is one example where oxygen, mm, I'm trying to figure out what the name of this is. It's, I want to say oxonium, but it's an oxygen that has three bonds and it's positive. And that's perfectly fine. It still fits the octet rule. All right, so there are three um, resonance structures for this. Um, before I move on, um, let me label them actually A, B, and C. Last one. I'm moving kind of fast. You could always pause the video, or even better, after you take notes, give it a day and see if you could do these on your own without any uh, notes. The last one is also interesting because we have now a nitrogen. It's our first molecule with a nitrogen. Okay, it is in the part, and that's drawn in the problem right there. So here's negative. So what is the key for an anion? The tip for an anion is to grow all the lone pairs and start by moving the lone pair of the anion atom. Nitrogen that's negative has two bonds and two lone pairs. So here's the trick. The trick is, again, it can be trial and error, especially if you're first learning this, but maybe half the class will say, let's move it to the left. The other half might say, let's move it to the right. If I move it to the right, I make a double bond right here, and that carbon now has five bonds, and there's nothing I can do about it. I can't shift it hydrogen away. There's no pi bond here between these two carbons to shift away to get it down to four bonds. So I should move it to the right, I should move it to the left. Okay. Now this carbon, again, is starting to form a fifth bond, but now this double bond can say, well, let's fix that, and we can resolve that issue and make all the carbons again, mm, well, no, make all the carbons uh, have four bonds when they're neutral. Okay. The other thing about mechanism arrows is that if you are confident that you do them correct, then just follow your mechanism arrows and what they're telling you to do. What is this telling you to do? To do? The first pink arrow is telling you to make a double bond right there using this lone pair. Nothing else changes on the right-hand side of the molecule. This arrow is telling you to put a lone pair right there. That carbon has no hydrogens, so this carbon has no hydrogens. Atoms do not move. But we know what a carbon with three bonds and a lone pair is. It is an anion. This molecule only has two resonance structures, A and B. All right, that was all four of them. Let's see if I can get all on the same screen. Right there. Okay, practice. The last thing I want to say is it's hard for very bright people to intentionally make mistakes. You should make mistakes so you can see what is bad and what is good. For instance, if I had moved the lone pair to the right, I would have this structure. Now it looks fine, but it only looks fine because we are forgetting there are two hydrogens on this carbon. So literally, you can draw those two hydrogens and now you see, oh, nuts. This is wrong. We can't have a carbon with five bonds. You gotta make mistakes now. And when you make the mistake, understand why it's a mistake to help you avoid doing the same thing on an exam.